what is going on guys and welcome to mac terminal commands and this video we're going to look at 30 useful mac terminal commands and few keyboard shortcuts but before we look at commands let's look at our keyboard shortcuts that could really speed up our workflow so if you see over here that i don't have a terminal in my dock right so instead of going to finder and going to utilities I can just press command space over here and you can see that I can just type right terminal right so if I type over here terminal right it auto completes it for you and it right away opens the terminal window right now over here you can see that I can go to the options and I can just say keep in a dock right and then it would stay from now on in the dock now the next one would be when we are already working with the terminal would be command plus n right which would open a new terminal window so let's do that let's plus command n and one more time and one more time and you can see how i'm uh, opening new windows very very fast right now i could have done it over here with the shell with the new window and over here but you can see that over here they're already suggesting a shortcut anyway right now the next one would be command plus or minus right which would be zoom in or zoom out so how do we do that we just press command uh, command plus and you can see how I'm zooming in or I can just press command minus right and I would be actually zooming out and this actually works not just with a terminal app then actually would work with uh, most of your other apps too right now the next one would be clear the last line or clear the whole screen right so let's say that I issuing the commands, right? Right now I'm just pressing return, but imagine if these would be commands, right? And let's say that it's really annoying, you wanna actually clear the screen. Well, you have two options. You can press command uh, L, would, which would just clear the last command over here like this, or we can just press command K, which would clear the whole screen altogether. Uh, after that, we have arrow key up one arrow key down. Right. So let's say that if we issue command echo over here, hello world, right, then I'm just going to say that I'm going to CD desktop, right, change the directory to desktop, and then I would type something like ls and with an option of la, right, so which would give me a files that I have over here in my directory. And if I would decide that I would want to go back, let's say, to the first command, right, only thing that I would need to do is actually press uh, arrow key up, right? So you can see that this is my last command, right? So what about one before, right? Here I have a calendar, then I have a desktop, and then I have over here the echo hello world, right? So the only thing that I needed to do is actually use the arrow key up, and you can see that it's again going to other commands that I had actually before because they have been saved in the file, right? So over here, just by going with arrow keys up and down, I can uh, pick and choose my last commands, right? So if I want, again, L echo hello world, I just find that command, press the return, and you can see that I have over here uh, echo hello world, right? Now, another thing that we could do is obviously go uh, back, let's say, to the beginning of the line or the end of the line, right? So you can see that I picked over here my last command, and if I go with an arrow key to the left, I go to the left and if I go back I mean it's kind of self-explanatory you are going to the other side now there's one more shortcut that you could use if you want to go to the beginning of the line you just press Control a right and you're gonna be uh, to the beginning of the line so that's gonna be uh, with a keyboard shortcuts now let's just jump to commands so the first command we're gonna look at is gonna be echo which is the simplest command that outputs the strings passed as arguments, right? So we just type over here echo, and I'm gonna type a double quotation mark, and over here I'm gonna say hello world, right? And if I press return, now you can see that I have hello world on the screen, right? And if I would, again, type the same thing with an echo, right? But in this case, I'm just gonna use a single quotation marks, right? I'm just gonna say hello world, right? Or let's say, hello John right and with a single quotation marks again we press return and it does the same thing now the next command is going to be 
uh, present working directory, which shows the path to the directory you're working in, right? So we just uh, type pwd over here, and you can see that it shows the actual uh, path to the folder that I'm working in, right? And if, let's say, I'm going to go back to my home directory, which is the command we're going to cover in, let's say, in a few commands, but let's just do it for now anyway, right? And again, if I type pwd, right, this is going to be a different path, right? And that's how we know where we are actually at, right? So if we ever have a confusion about which directory we're at, right, we can just go with uh, present working directory, and it's going to show us the path where we are actually located, right? Now, the next thing, next command is going to be uh, ls, which is going to be a listing of directories, right? So if I'm sitting right now in my home directory, if I just press ls, you can see that these are all the directories that are actually in my home directory, right? Now, I have a couple of options that I could use with ls, and first one would be long listing format, and the other one would be long listing format with hidden files, right? So let's look first at a long listing, right? So we type ls, and then we just type hyphen l, and you can see that Right now I have, uh, first of all, it tells me whether it's directory or a file, right? Whenever you're going to have D in front, this is going to be directory. And if you want, then that's just going to mean that that's just a simple file. Then over here, I have already permissions. Then I have who's the owner, who's the group, when it was created, and actually the time and everything. So if we want to go ahead and actually see the hidden files, we would type a ls hyphen la. And over here, you can see that these files who are showing up with the dot in front, right? Those are actually a hidden files that you wouldn't be able to see with a finder. So that's a pretty neat feature, right? Now over here, I'm going to use my sh keyboard shortcut that we learned, right? I'm just going to clear the screen. And the next one we're going to look at is change directory, right? So like I said, I was sitting in my, uh, let's say, home directory, right? And if I just type what kind of directories I have, and if I decide that I want to go, let's say, to documents, right? So over here, I would type CD, and over here, I would type documents, right? And if I press again LS, you can see that this is a different listing of directories because I have changed directory, right? And the only thing we would need to do is type CD over here, and then the folder where we would want to go, right? So again, we could do the same thing, and let's say we could just say CD, and let's say that we would want to go to Bootstrap, right? Bootstrap over here, right? And again, type LS, and now you can see that I have moved even one layer lower, right? And this is how we can pretty much jump left, uh, you know, up and down, left and right throughout all our directories in the terminal, right? Now, if we ever just want to go back to our home directory, this is a very simple command. Over here, we type like this, and right away, we're going to go back to our home directory over here, right? So if I'm going to clean clean the screen, right, and again, type pwd over here, you can see that I'm back in my home directory. Next, we're going to look at command cd, and what happens if we uh, put two dots, right? So over here, again, you can see that I'm in a home directory, right? And if I type over here, cd and let's say that i'm going to go this time to let's say unix right that's one going to be one of my folders right and you can see over here that if i type uh, which directory i'm in right present working directory you can see that i'm actually in a unix folder right now if i would just want to go back one directory up right all i would need to do is type over here cd and space and two dots over here right and you can see that I'm back in my home directory, right? And if I go my path, right, you can see that I'm back in uh, my home directory, right? Now, this would work the same way if we want to do, let's say, two, uh, two layers up, right? So again, I would do the same thing. I would say change directory, right? And first I would go to my Unix folder, right? And within my Unix folder, there's another folder which was called Unix 1 right and you can see over here that if i uh, write a present working directory you can see that i have these directories right so i have unix and then unix one right 
and again if i would want to go back to my home directory and if i know how many layers i need to go back or in general if i need to go just back to directories i would type cd two dots over here a forward slash and again two dots right and again i'm back in my home directory right now if we just want to toggle between the directories that we have been in right only thing we would need to do is over here this cd space hyphen right and what happens is if i press return you can see that now i'm in my unix one so two layers down and if i go back and again press cd hyphen you can see now in my back in my home one right now this is not the same it's not going to take me always back to my home one it just toggles in between these two directories that i have been in right now last two things about changing directories that i want to show you is how tab could actually be your best friend right so over here i just want to show you that these are directories that are in my home directory right so i have applications desktop and downloads right now what we can do is over here if i let's say if i'm not sure if i don't have this listing in front of me right if i'm not sure what kind of uh the actual name was what i can do is type cd and then just type the first letter of my let's say directory right so if i press a for applications right and if i press tab it's going to auto complete now one thing you need to remember over here it didn't do anything and the reason why because it is case sensitive right so over here what i would need to do is actually type a over here like this and if i press the tab you can see that it's going to show the applications it's going to auto complete for me right so if i press over here like this you can see that now i'm in applications right so let's say that i'm going to go one layer back and you can see that i didn't put the space that was the reason if i go one layer back again i'm in my home directory right now if i would have typed something like this cd and then unix which is you can see over here with a small letter right and then the press tab you can see it right away finds it because it is like i said case sensitive so it is a difference whether you're typing the, a big letter or a small letter over here right now the next thing that i want to show you is actually how you can use a double tab right and the reason for double tab would be let's say over here you can see that i have three folders right i have desktop download and documents right and what happens is that even if i press the capital letter d right and if i press the tab once nothing is happening right now when i press the tab the second time right so you can do it either like i like i did just with five seconds delay or right away you can see that it right away gives you the options right so what which one would you want right so it tells you like well would you want documents would you want downloads which one would you like right so then we can over here we can just say type desktop right and then we actually uh, go to the uh, directory where we want to go but this happens if we use this double tab right that's going to work in our favor uh, quite a few times next command we're going to cover is probably the most important command that you're going to need for working with terminal and the reason why we're covering as number 11 is not because it's not uh, most important but the reason was because i wanted you to learn some other commands so you can actually use this command and man stands for actually manual pages and if you type over here man and then if you would type any command that you would want let's say that we learned command echo right so we type man echo right and this is going to give us a manual pages about this command about echo command right you can see that it what it does it writes arguments to the standard output right and we have two options how we can read this document we can either scroll uh scroll down right and read line by line or we can just use over here this uh, forward back and exit right so if we press f you can see that i'm going down the page and another page and you can see now i hit the end right so if i press b which is going back i can just go one page back at the time right and if i want to exit right if i have if i think that i got enough information and just press Q over here and you can see I'm back in my uh, terminal window right and again I can use for different command let's say CP which is going to be for copy which we're going to cover a little bit later right and again you can see that I have copy files right and again we can go down over here and we can see 
uh, what are the options for this command and how to better use it. And the reason why it is so good, because if you ever have any, any doubts or, any, uh, or some kind of uh, concerns about command, you can actually go to manual pages and find out everything in detail. And the interesting part, you could actually have a man man, right? Which is actually manual pages about this command, right? So now we can again go and actually explore the actual command itself and how it works and what it does, right? So I'm just going to press Q over here and I'm going to return back to the terminal. Now, over here you can see this bash, right? And what this bash stands for is actually the shell that we're working in, right? And we're working in a bash shell. I mean, kind of, I just <laughs> kind of went back and forth and pretty much came to the same, back to the same conclusion that I was trying to tell you. But the reason for this is because we can actually have multiple shells that we can work in. We're working by default in bash, but we have option that we can switch shells if we want, right? But if we type echo over here and dollar sign and zero over here like this, what's going to happen is it's going to tell us what kind of shell we're working, in, right? And this is going to be bash, right? And also what we could type is echo and over here shell. And this is going to tell us the path to that shell, right? And you can see that I made a mistake over here. It's not going to be a over here, the number. It's going to be actual dollar sign, right? And now you can see that I have bin bash, right? That's going to be my path. And the reason why we need to know these commands is because actually we can switch shells, like I was saying, right? And if we want to switch shell, right? So let's say I'm over here, I'm going to type T C, uh, let's say S H, right? And if I type echo, right, right now, and then I say that I want a dollar sign zero, right? And you can see that I made a mistake, dollar sign zero. You can see that it's going to, this time it's going to tell me that my shell is T C S H, right? And one of the ways how we can actually see that is if I'm pressing the arrow key up, right? So if I'm going to my previous commands, I have echo, right? Then I have the mistake that I made, and that's it. And I'm trying to press it, but I actually can't go back, right? Because this shell, right? The history for the commands is actually these two commands that we created. That's it, right? So if we want to make things more interesting, right? We can, what we can do is we can actually type CSH, right? And if we go back again, and then we say echo, right? Uh, dollar sign, zero. And you can see that now my shell is um, CSH, right? So I went all the way from bash, now I'm in CH, right? And the way how we can always get, get out of the shells is just type exit and press return, right? So you can see that we uh, exited the first shell, or last shell that we created, right? Then we type another exit, right? Now we actually exited the second shell that we created. And if I type over here, echo, right? And if I type again, zero, we should be back in the bash, right? And sure enough, we're actually in the bash. And if I would type over here, exit, right? Then I would just close over here my whole uh, terminal application and I would be actually ready just to close it and leave the app altogether. Next, we're going to look at how we can create directory, remove directory, even that has some files or folders in there, and create a new file. All right. So right now you can see that I'm in my home directory. right? And if I want to go back, or not want to go back, if I want to go to my desktop, right? what I would do is I would take CD, and over here I would say desktop, right? And if I say list directory, you can see that I have nothing in there, right? Because this is all empty, right? So over here I would type mkdir, right? And let's say over here I would type Unix, right? And you can see that right away I have a new folder, right? Now, let's say that I would want to add another folder in there, right? So I have a couple of options, right? So either I go down to Unix, right? Over here like this and then create another folder, right? By creating over here, make DRR, and let's say something like Linux, right? Something like this. Or what I can do is actually, I'm gonna go back, right? And I'm gonna be in desktop and I can just say MKDIR, right? Unix, over here forward slash and Linux, right? So if I type this over here and we can just do it very simply, 
uh, over here by looking at what we have, and now we have Linux, right? Now, here's the key, though. We cannot make, let's say, two directories with this mkdir at the same time, right? So let me show you what I mean. So mkdir, right? And over here, I'm going to say YouTube, and I'm going to say, I don't know, coding, right? So you can see it right away throws back. It says no such file or directory, right? Because we can only do it if we have this path over here, right? So we have the first folder, then we create a second one. We cannot create like seven layers at the same time, right? What, what we can do is actually add the option mkdir, right, hyphen p, and then I would say write YouTube over here like this, then I would say coding, and then I would say Unix, right? And if I press over here, now everything went fine, and you can see that this is going to be my folder, right? And again, we can just pretty much go down with CD, so let's say YouTube over here like this, and then I'm going to say that I'm going to go to, let's say, coding, and then Unix. And let's check it out what we have, right? And now you can see that I'm in uh, Unix. So if I write PWD, or here like this, you can see that this is going to be my full path, right? And if, let's say, I'm going to go back over here, right? So remember how we went with two dots, right? So one, two, and three, right? And we should be back in desktop. And that's where is exactly where we had, right? Now the next thing what we would want to look at is how we can remove directory, right? So let's say again I'm going to uh, create a CD, right? I'm sorry, not create MKDIR, right? And I'm going to say that this is going to be Apple, right? So another directory. And if I want to move the remove that directory, only thing that I would need to do is actually write M rm dir right and right over here apple again i can do it either if i'm in this directory or i could actually write the path right so i press this and you can see that it's gone right and if i want to do the same thing right with the other ones i write rm dir right and let's say i'm going to write over here unix right but see this is the issue right it says over here that directory is not empty so whether you have empty folder or any kind of file, this command is not going to do it because you have something in there, right? So let's look at how what we need to do. Like, so first I'm going to clear the screen, right? And the way we would do that is we write command rm and over here hyphen um, capital R, right? And now we're going to write Unix. And just to show you that we can do both of them, right? We're going to write YouTube over here like this right and now you can see that both of them are gone so my desktop is completely empty if i write ls right you can see that there's nothing in there right next thing what we're going to look at is how to create files right so the most basic one is with touch command right or here we write touch and over here let's say i'm going to say new text right and this is going to be my new text file now, now it's completely empty Right? There's nothing in there, but we created our file, right? And the, the way it works is if there is file like that, it just uh, basically overwrites it. And if there isn't file, it creates one, right? So if I write touch, and let's say old text, right? So you can see that I have right now both of these files. It didn't ro overwrite that file because it obviously there was one already before. But if I write ls, and let's say with an option, la, right, you can see over here that this was, I don't know, that both of them were made at the same time, right, at 10 o'clock, 1020, right. But you can see over here now 1021, and if I write touch, and then I'll say new text, right, and then I do ls, la again, right, you can see that now my new one is overwritten, it's actually at uh, 1021. Right, so that's an easy way, and of course, if we have directory, right, and I'm gonna again make Unix, and I'm gonna say that I would want a touch, right, and Unix, and over here, and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be Linux TXT, right? So let's check it out what we have over here, and sure enough, this is our Linux TXT, right? That's the file that we created. 
right? And you're going to say, well, it's not very useful because all I'm creating is basically empty files. So let's check how we can do it with a text editor that is built in the Unix, how we can, we can do both of these things, right? How we can actually create the files and actually edit them, right? So the way we go to a text editor in a Unix is actually we type nano, right? And then we have a couple of options, right? So the first one is would be very basic. We already have a file, right? And you can see that I'm sitting in the same desktop, right? And again, I'm not going to be adding the path. We already understand that idea, right? So what we would do over here, we would just type new, right? TXT. And now we're in the file, right? And then I would say hello world, right? Something like this. And then the way we exit, right, over here, this is going to be control, right? And all this is going to be control. You just press control, and then this is the option, right? So for exit, we press control X, right? So we press control X, right? And over here, you could say save modified buffer, right? We just need to click yes, right? And over here, it says file name to write new TXT. Do you want that file, right? Since we're editing the file, of course, we're going to say yes, but actually, we could actually change it if we want to, right? So over here, now we have new text file, right? And if I open it over here, you can see that I have hello world, right? So the same way we could actually create a new file, right? And again, there's two options how we can do that. We can just type over here nano, right? Just type nano over here and just open it, right? And again, write hello John, right? And again, we're just going to exit it. And it's going to say yes. And now we need to create the file, right? And of course, again, since we're working in this uh, in this uh, directory, right? It's going to create in this directory. So we're going to say John txt, right? And this is going to be my John txt file, right? Another way would be creating totally new file. If I would just say no, no, and over here I would write YouTube, right? Txt, right? So again, we go back over here, and I'm going to say hello, YouTube, right? And again, we're just going to exit. I am going to say yes. And you can see that it right away gives me the YouTube. And because I already pre-recorded, pre what is the name? I could have changed the name, but if you definitely want right away to do this, you can do it this way. Next, we're going to look at how to remove the file, how to concatenate the files, how to just read the head of the file, then the end of the file, and what kind of command is for the calendar, right? So over here, let's say that we're going to create another file, and I'm going to say over here, touch, right? I'm going to say touch over here like this, and then I'm going to say, let's say, I'm going to say delete over here, text, right? So now this is going to be my text file, right? And if I want to remove it, again, since I'm in the same directory, I just write rm, right? This is going to be for removing, and I write delete over here, text, right? And now you can see how easy it was for me to delete the file, right? Now, next thing we're going to look at is how we can concatenate files, right? Now, in this case, it's not going to be making a new file, right? But we're still going to be seeing the uh, input from both files on the screen, right? So here we have new text, right, which is going to be hello world. And over here we have a hello YouTube, right? So if we write over here concat, right, and instead of on concat, we write cat. And we write the two file names, right? So it's going to be new text and YouTube text, right? Over here like this. You can see that now I have hello world and hello YouTube, right? So if I would just write one file, right, it wouldn't concatenate. It would just actually display the results on the screen, right? So we write cat, and over here we write new text, right? And you can see that I have over here hello world, right? So we just basically read that file new text, right? Now after that, you can see over here I created uh, a file, a very long file with Laura Mipsum, right? Just to show you two commands, how we can read the beginning of the file and the end of the file, right? So what we do over here, we would write a head, and then we're going to write old txt, right? And now you can see that this is going to be the beginning of the file, right? This is going to be the head, right? 
and if we would write the tail, right, this would old txt, right? So this is just going to show me the end of the file, right? So you can check it out yourself. If you create a file, you can see how far it goes. But the idea is that you can write, that you can read the beginning and the end of the file, right? And next, we're going to check how to do the calendar, right? So I'm going to clear the screen right now. And once we clear the screen, what we can write over here is cal, right? And you can see that right away we have a calendar, right? So now we have November, right? But let's say that if we would write something else, we could write calendar. Right over here, I'm going to write month 12th and let's say 19, I don't know, 83, right? So we can see the December of 1983, right? So let's say that you had a birthday that day or something like that. You can always check it out over here, right? What would be the day of your birthday, right? And last, let's look at how we can copy files, move files, and at the same time, if we want, uh, with the same command, we can rename files, how we can create aliases for uh, like a short shortcuts for commands, uh, sort file, and the last but not least, how to get a calculator, right? So the first thing, how we can copy a file, right? So that would be done with a copy command, right? And the first thing what we would need to write is uh, the file name, right? So we're going to write over here new text, right? And then we need to choose where we would want to copy, right? So if it's in the same directory, right? If we don't want to leave anywhere, we would need to write a new file name, right? So what I'm going to say is, I don't know, desk txt, right? So now you can see that I have my new file, which is exact copy of this new txt, right? Now I could have also done the same way if I would want to put it in a Unix over here folder, right? So I would write cp new, right, text, and then I would say something along the lines of what would be my new, uh, my new file, right? So I'm going to say not new, I'm going to say new one, right, txt, right? And again, you can see that I didn't I made a mistake. I didn't actually put it uh, the actual Unix folder in front, and therefore I have over here one more file that I didn't need to use, right? So let's do it again. Let's do it this time properly. Let's do cp new text, and we're gonna say Unix, right? And over here we're gonna say new one txt, right? And now if we go in the Unix folder, right? We can see over here we have new one txt now here's the deal though with copy and move right by default they will gonna be overriding files right so let's say that if you're copying this old txt right and if you by mistake name the file uh, as one of the one of these linux or new one txt if you're not gonna add any options right you will gonna overwrite uh, right away the file right so the way to avoid that we would need to use a option right so we write cp over here like this cp then we would say that we want uh dash right and over here i and then i would want to write a the same way the new txt over here like this and then we would, if I would write, like, say, let's say Linux, right, the one that we have already, and obviously we would need to go on over here, create Unix, right, that's going to be our folder. And if I press return, you can see that it's saying, listen, you already have over here Linux TXT, right? Do you want to override that or no, right? So in this case, obviously, it's a dummy little file, so we can do whatever we want. Just be careful when you're working with something important that you don't overwrite it's always better if you at least uh, get this I uh, option, right? That at least if you make a mistake or something, then you have an option of choosing, right? So we're just going to say yes, right? And last thing with copying, I just want to show you now, and also with moving, right? That we can write CP, right? And let's say that we would want a file from different directory and we don't know technically the path or anything right so what we can do is from the finder or from over here desktop right but we can do the same thing with the finder right what we can do is we can just drag the file over here we can drag it over here 
and you can see that it gives me the full path right users smilga desktop and everything right and just to show you that it works the same with the finder i'm just going to delete this and we're going to open it over here and let's say this linux one right we can do the same thing right we drag it over here and you can see that it works the same way right now the next thing about uh, actually uh, moving the files right is let's check it out how that one works right so we go over here I'm just gonna delete this I'm gonna clear the screen right and over here we have move the file rename the file right so and it works the same way right so we let's say we have a move right command then we write new txt and over here I'm also gonna say where I want to move right so over here again I'm gonna say Unix right and over here like this and now I can see that my file actually moved over here right so if, if I open this one up right you can see that new has been moved right but again it works the same way that it does overwrite the files so you need to again again use the MV right and with a dash of one dash of info right over here like this because that way you don't overwrite the file by mistake right now after that uh what we can also do is we can just rename the file if we want right so what happens is if we just write over here let's say i have this john txt right and if i don't move it actually specifically if i don't write where i want to move it if i just write john right txt and then i say that, let's say i don't know peter right peter txt right if it happens in the same folder i didn't specifically say which other folder right you can see how it, this john became peter right the next command that i would want you to look at is alias right and how alias works is remember this command just as an example right how we did it right for desktop right so this gave us a all the uh, let's say files and folders and directories in our current directory where we are right ls and this was the option la which was for longer uh, longer file and for a actual hidden files too right so what happens if we would say let's say if we would just want to make a shortcut right we don't want to type it every time ls and then la right so what we would do is we would use alias we would write like this we would write alias alias like this and the first thing we can see that there is no aliases right because we wrote alias and we press return and no aliases were returned right so what we do over here right alias over here like this and then we say what would be our shortcut so let's say we're going to say ll right and then single or double quotes and ls and over here we're going to say uh, la right we press return again we check alias and now you can see that i have my aliases right so this is going to be for ll and this is what's going to happen right so if i'm in the same uh, let's say folder right and i clean this and i just press ll right you can see that i have the same command as if i would type all this long stuff right it's exactly the same now the one thing you know is that l uh, alias only works unless you configure it uh, actually only while your window is open right so the moment you're going to close the window it's actually gonna uh, disappear you're gonna have to create a new alias right now next thing is what we would want to do is actually work with the sort right so for the sort what we would want to do is actually use nano right and we're going to say that we're going to create i don't know angular txt right and we're just going to give it a i don't know a list right we're going to say angular this is going to be vu this is going to be react right then we're going to say java and we're going to repeat them right we're going to say angular angular over here angular and then we're going to say again vu right react and i don't know java java right and we're going to save the file right yes i'm going to save it over here like this and what we would want to do is write sort and right we're going to write angular 
and we're going to see what happens, right? Angular TXT, right? And now you can see how it's sorted, right? First of all, sorted all the Angulars over here. Then we have Java's, then we have React, right? So it kind of sorts our file uh, of the listings, right? If we have Angular, then we have Java. It's not anymore all over the place, right? So again, if we write sort, and if we would use actually R, right? And again, we're going to write Angular txt, right? So now you can see that it's the other way, right? The Vue is on top and the Angular is on the bottom, right? So we're done with the reverse. Let's just check it out, calculator, right? So for calculator, we just press BC over here. And let's say that I'm going to write 10 times 30. This is going to be 300. And then I want to say 12 plus 2. This is going to be 14 and on and on and on. And if we want to get out of this calculator, we just press quit right, like this. And we're back to our uh, desktop.